Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 79. I've been working on a project lately where I needed to use a particle system to emit a model. Now, this is something that I think has been pretty well covered in other people's videos and tutorials, including Zachariah Scott and a couple of others. See the links in the description for how to do that. What I discovered, though, was that although I could create a particle system that would, in fact, emit a model or same copy of the same model uh, a number of times, and I could animate that as a particle, what I could not do was change the orientation of the model in the particle so that, you know, if I spawned some waving grass using a custom particle system, it would just stay facing the same direction. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get around that limitation via a solution I found, and I thought it would be useful for you to know. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the particle editor tool. I don't have any particles loaded, so I'm going to say new particle system. I'm going to create, and I'm going to name this one tip of the day demo. All right. So now I have an empty particle system. And so what I'm going to do is in order to create a particle system, I have to create a renderer. And like I said, I need a model renderer. So the one I'm looking for here is render models. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and pick the model that I want to render. And that's going to be here. It's sequence zero model. That's the, the model that you need. And it's going to show me the list of, this is just your standard model picker from Source Filmmaker. Turn on the wireframe so that I can see it. What I'm looking for is this one, tall grass zero one. So I hit open. Still, though, there's nothing here, and that's because I have not added anything else to it. So the first thing I need to do is add an emitter. So I'm going to add an emitter, and that emitter is going to be emit instantaneously. And it's going to be emitting 100 of them, and they are all in one place, and they're all huge. So we're going to fix that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to render model uh, emitter excuse me, uh, renderer, and I'm going to find the orient Z to normal. It's in here somewhere. I know it's here. Orient model Z to normal. All right, so for this model, that will orient it upright for me, and that's okay. Um, you may find other models may not behave quite the same way, so you'll need to experiment with some of these things. Now, this thing is still too big for my purposes, so I am going to add an initializer, and I'm going to say we want a radius random initializer. And this one's pretty cute. The radius random will basically choose a random radius within values that we supply. So I'm going to say I want the radius maximum to be, let's say, 0 0.5 and the radius minimum to be 0 0.2. OK, so that makes a much more manageable size, but there's still a hundred of these things all in exactly the same place. So we need to add another initializer. And that initializer is going to be position within box random. Now this one will let me position the randomly generated emitter sprites, the, the individual models, within a box that I define. And that's going to be down here. Let's see, i got to find it. Um, here it is. Max and min. So I'm going to say minimum negative 100, negative 100, and 0. That means you can go up to 100 units away in the x and y plane, but not in the z plane. So, But that puts it all in one corner. So if I say the maximum, negative 100, negative 100, 0. Oh, excuse me, that should have been 100, 100, 0. As you can see, it pushes them all off the side. Now we have a hundred of these little good guys here thrown about in all of their glory. Okay, so that looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as uh, I'm just going to overwrite this one that I created earlier. Yes. And as soon as it's done saving, it's going to ask me the useless question of do you want to add it to Perforce? which I assume is Valve's internal source control system that we don't have access to. So I'll switch back to Source Filmmaker. I've already got this scene set up here that I've spawned. 
uh, a camera and a light. So I'm going to create an animation set for a new particle system. I'm going to browse this tip of the day demo start time. I'm going to set the emission duration to 60 seconds and the particle system lifetime to 60 seconds as well, because that way it won't cut out in the middle of the um, middle of uh, viewing it. And then I have to scrub the playhead out and scrub it back in, but it's not here. So where did it go? Ah, it's over here. Yeah, it spawned. It spawned in front of the scene camera, not in front of the work camera. So I'll just bring it down here. And you'll notice this is something that's pretty typical for Source Filmmaker. The um, particle systems don't move or change or update until you scrub the playhead out and into the um, into the window. So this one is. Oops. I meant to grab all time. All right, there it is. There, that's a little better. I, I must have dragged it underneath the floor or something because I'm a little out of practice. So I scrub out and scrub in, and we can see here, and especially if I switch back to the regular camera, and maybe elevate the, the view a little bit. That looks nice. We've got ourselves some grass, but it's boring grass. It's just sitting there. Also, while I can move it in the X and Y planes and even the Z planes, I can move it. I cannot, for example, change its orientation. Look at the grass now. When I do this, when I go like this and bring it back in, it's all still facing exactly the same way. I can change its orientation again. No change at all. Also, it's not moving. So those are two problems that we can solve really easily. So the first one I want to do is change the fact that it won't change its orientation. That's the thing that we're trying to solve here. That's what this tip is about. And in order to do that, we're going to go back to the particle editor and I'm going to add an operator. An operator is going to be, and the operator we want is called rotation from control point forward orientation. How about that for it says rotation from CP forward orientation. That's rotation from control point forward orientation. I went through a lot of experimentation to save you having to figure out how to do this. So there you go. But there's a whole bunch of these other operators that will affect how particle systems work. And if you're not an expert with particle systems or you're only playing with them, I strongly encourage you to get in here and have some fun. You can't really break anything. The worst you can do is crash source filmmaker. So play with these and see what you can get. So... <clears throat> Excuse me. So we got rotation from control point forward orientation. First thing I need to do is change the control point to zero. And uh, then that should pretty much take care of the rotation issue. So now I'm going to save this. And I do not want to add it to perforce, which it will ask me in a moment. Okay, and now I switch back to Source Filmmaker. If I scrub out, and then now if I turn this and scrub the head out, you can see that they do in fact change orientation. Now it's important to note that the individual models are what's changing orientation, not the particle system as a whole. You're not rotating the whole particle system. This just rotates the individual models. But if you were doing what I was doing and creating a particle system that only emitted one piece of grass so you could manually place it exactly where you wanted it to be precise, well, that um, will help you. And this should help you as well. Um, and if, if it's not suitable for your needs, you can definitely follow this path and experiment and find something within that uh, uh, particle editor tool that should help you get where you need to go. But as you can see now, it can change the orientation of the models, which is extremely nice for a lot of people I know have had this problem. <laughs> However, it's still boring. It's just sitting there. Even though we can turn it, that's boring. So we got one more thing that we're going to do, and this is a freebie. It's not really how to rotate them. And you'll find more and good advice on how to do this on Zachariah Scott's video, which I will link in the description, see below. Uh, but 
this is a nice little thing that you can also experiment with yourself to create interesting particle effects and interesting effects with models that you want to use as particles. So what I need to do is add a, uh, an operator here, and we're going to add one operator right now, and it's going to be called Oscillate Vector. Okay, so Oscillate Vector. So Oscillate Vector... The first thing that we need to do is, um, I'm going to move this to the top. I, I, that's the way I've always done it. I don't think it makes a difference, but I prefer the oscillation to happen first because the other one is a more static kind of thing. The, the next thing we have to do is on these oscillation and these other operators in the particle system, they have a lifetime for how long they actually affect the particles. And this one starts off at one second and ends at one second. So it would, if we had it do anything, it would only do it for a second and you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so we're going to say end time max 60, that's 60 seconds, and end time minimum 60. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit, but there's still nothing happening here. The, the particles are not doing anything, and that's because we need to go down and start playing with these values here. Oscillation frequency maximum and oscillation frequency minimum. So I'm going to set the oscillation frequency minimum to 0, 0, 0 and the oscillation frequency maximum to 111, still nothing happening. And now I'm going to change this to normal. Let's see, an oscillation rate max. There we go. So I'm going to change the frequency back to, it's the rate that we needed to play with, not the frequency. Um, so yeah, experiment with some of these. And you can... You can see now that the grass is waving back and forth, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 gives us a slightly different look and feel. And you can add, if I add another one here, I'm going to add noise vector, I think is what it's called. Noise vector. And noise vector will let us... See, right now it's affecting the color. I'm going to say I'm going to have it also affect the normal. The normal is essentially the orientation of the model. And so I'm going to say I want the output maximum to be 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And why is that not doing what I want it to? Well, it's supposed to add some noise. Oh, wait, wait. I think I know what's going on. Where is it? Uh, yeah, here it is. It's the same, th same thing, I believe. Operator. Hmm. Okay, well, this is not working. So I'm going to remove this. I had it working on another one. And I promise you it did. Um, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time picking and poking at various settings in this. I thought I had it in my head. I apparently didn't. But if you experiment with that, what you can do, as you can see here, is that this is oscillating in a very pendulum-like steady motion back and forth and back and forth. The noise vector is supposed to add some noise to that, so it will oscillate in a slight, what looks to be slightly more random, and that's something that you can experiment with to get better effects for your particle systems. So um, I encourage you to tinker around with some of this stuff. There's some great stuff that you can do, and I'm really only scratching the surface of what we can do with the particle system editor so far, but I knew that this would be helpful to some people. All right, so as soon as this is done saving, we're going to go back to Source Filmmaker, and if I scrub out and scrub back in, now we have grass that is moving, and I can actually cause it to, to move back and forth. It's like it can dance when I grab it and move it around. Now watch, watch this. I recorded it moving back and forth, so now the grass is going to dance for us. Okay, so you can obviously have some fun and you can even modify the orientation of these models as emitters in real time, which is fun. So I encourage you to play around with some of this and I encourage you to have some fun with it. And um, I hope this was helpful to some folks because I know when I was looking for information on this, I found a lot of threads of people who either didn't get the problem solved or uh, uh, didn't 
talk about exactly how they solved it. And I think this is a pretty elegant solution for at least some of those scenarios. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks for subscribing and all of that. Um, if any of you have any questions about why I've been gone so long or anything like that, I'm probably going to put out another video so I don't sit here and yabber on when people just want to get to the tip. Uh, and so I will share some of that with you at some point in the near future. But yeah, I'm, I'm still around. And as my interest ebbs and wanes, I will continue to uh, uh, come back to these tips and share what information I find useful. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. I'm Jim Merlins, and I look forward to seeing you next time.